There are a number of short-term prevention activities wool growers can take to prevent fly strike. These activities are effective if a fly wave is imminent and when used in combination. These short-term activities should be considered as part of a broader, integrated approach to fly strike management. Shearing and crutching can provide up to six weeks protection from body and breech strike. However, if sheep are scouring, this protection may be reduced to three weeks. Shearing or crutching should be timed to coincide with the usual start of the fly season or just before. This is to reduce the number of susceptible sheep when the flies become active after winter. You should carefully consider the timing of shearing and crutching based on periods of high risk in your area. Preventative chemicals should be used in combination with other activities. It's important not to rely on these alone. Time the application of preventative chemicals to extend protection through the season and between other activities. Select the right chemical for the job. Some chemicals can be used for prevention or as a treatment. Some are not interchangeable. Consider label protection period, application method, wool length and chemical group. Read and follow label instructions. Even if you have used the chemical before, some steps may have changed. Do not overdose or underdose. Calibrate your equipment regularly and apply the right amount of chemical the right way every time. Remember, check the withholding period for domestic slaughter and other intervals for export slaughter, sheep rehandling and wool harvesting and keep records. If you haven't already, or if it's been a while, make sure you attend a chemical users training course. Scouring can cause dags to form rapidly. Dags can cause the wool and skin around the breech to stay moist and warm. This creates an odor which attracts female flies and provides the ideal environment for them to lay their eggs and for maggots to develop. Worms can cause scouring, which leads to dag formation. To control worms, you need to monitor worm populations using faecal egg counts, drench when required and use the right drench for the job and the right dose, and rotate drenches and use drenches with multi-actives where possible. It's also important to avoid sudden changes in diet that may induce scouring, such as the sudden introduction of grain or forage crops. Selecting paddocks carefully helps mitigate the environmental factors that contribute to fly strike and avoid hot spots that encourage fly activity. This can include selecting paddocks that are more open and exposed to wind and those with less timber and wet areas. Fly activity will be reduced in these paddocks and sheep will dry out more quickly. Avoid paddocks that may be contaminated with a large worm population, for example, those that have been recently grazed. Activities which help reduce fly populations should be timed before the first emergence of flies from the pupae stage, not just within the fly season. To reduce the presence of flies, remove and dispose of any fleece or waste animal matter such as dags, dirty wool, horn tips and tails, as well as carcasses. This helps to eliminate sources of protein for flies. Collect maggots from wool clippings when you've treated an animal Seal them in a plastic bag and leave them for a few days so the maggots die. This helps reduce the number of flies and can prevent a fly wave. Manage flies at isolated sites and at a property level. This can make a significant difference to the level of fly strike on individual properties and in the local area. Remember, these short-term activities should be used in combination and in consideration of an integrated fly strike management plan. AWI has released a series of resources to help you manage fly strike. These include resources to help you monitor and treat fly strike, as well as prevent the occurrence of strike. Access these and other tools from the AWI website, wool.com, or from the Flyboss website, flyboss.com. Dot com 
www.ngnetwork.com.au.